Welcome to this video presentation on the mortgage servicing rules. This video will provide you with information that may help you incorporate the rules into your compliance management system or CMS. An effective CMS can help any supervised bank ensure compliance with consumer protection regulations, including the mortgage servicing rules. In this video, we often refer simply to the rules when talking about the mortgage servicing rules. Banks vary in size, product offerings, reliance on third-party service providers such as subservicers, and business strategies, which an appropriate CMS will reflect. As you know, there are two components of an effective CMS. First, board and management oversight, and second, a compliance program. An effective compliance program includes policies and procedures, training, monitoring and or audit, and responding to consumer complaints. Today, we won't cover all of the components of a CMS, but instead we'll focus on some issues to keep in mind that specifically relate to the rules. Let's start by looking at oversight by your board of directors and management. The board of directors or board and management can foster a dynamic CMS that can adjust on an ongoing basis to focus resources where they are needed most based on the risks to your institution. This includes making adjustments that reflect changes to a bank's business over time as well as regulatory changes. With respect to mortgage loan servicing, the board decides whether the bank will service mortgage loans at all, and if so, whether they want the bank to attain or maintain small servicer status. The requirements for maintaining small servicer status and for demonstrating ongoing compliance with the rules applicable to small servicer may also be a factor in your bank's business decision. The board may also decide whether to use a subservicer. If your bank does use one, remember that the board and management are ultimately responsible for ensuring compliance with applicable consumer protection laws and regulations and that an effective CMS includes third-party oversight. Whether your institution qualifies as a small or large servicer, your board or management may want to designate an individual to be responsible for compliance with the rules. In larger banks, there may be several people who provide oversight, while a small bank with limited staff may only have one person with expertise in the rules. Policies and procedures are another important component of your bank's CMS and are also important to small servicers that are exempt from Regulation X requirements to maintain certain policies and procedures in writing. Appropriate policies and procedures assist in managing the compliance risk in the products and services your bank offers and help ensure consistency in servicing practices. In addition, they promote compliance with all applicable consumer compliance laws and regulations and clarify how the bank would maintain continuity in the absence of key individuals. They can also help facilitate consistent handling of issues when non-routine situations arise. Next, let's discuss the training component of your CMS and how to incorporate relevant parts of the rules. Ongoing training of relevant personnel on applicable laws and regulations is a key aspect of any CMS. Your training approach may vary depending on the size and scope of your bank's servicing activities. When designing your training program, consider which regulatory requirements are applicable to your institution and which personnel you will train. Effective training systems also cover the bank's policies and procedures that ensure compliance with applicable regulatory requirements. You may focus your training on the level of knowledge needed by each person or group in order to understand and comply with the rules. For instance, call center, servicing, account collection, compliance, and audit staff may have different training needs based on their responsibilities at your institution. An effective monitoring program tailored to the size and scope of your servicing activities is an essential part of a CMS. Routine monitoring and or audits of your servicing activities can give you a sense of the degree to which your bank is meeting the requirements of the rules. Monitoring and audit results can help you identify areas of mortgage loan servicing that need refinement. This will also give you an opportunity to determine early whether a given issue is an isolated case 
or whether there is a systemic problem calling for broader action. The most effective monitoring programs also formally track issues and identify remedies in order to prevent recurrence. This may include such things as providing targeted training, amending policies and procedures, or adjusting system parameters. Your management may review monitoring documentation and findings to continually improve your institution's CMS. Your monitoring may also identify issues that could arise in the future so that you are prepared to address them. This proactive approach will help save you time and effort if such issues should arise. An effective CMS has policies and procedures in place to handle complaints promptly and effectively. Consumer complaints and inquiries can be useful for identifying potential issues in your compliance program. Consumers may not always frame their communications as complaints, so it is useful to consider how your institution defines and categorizes customer inquiries. Accurately categorized complaints can enable your compliance officer to monitor various business lines to anticipate issues and improve customer service and reduce compliance risks. Monitoring complaints and inquiries related to any third-party service provider that you contract with, such as a subservicer, is also an important part of third-party oversight. We want to make special mention of some areas for you to consider when assessing your CMS program. Specifically, anticipating possibly non-routine issues, such as forced place insurance and accommodation loans, and incorporating them into your program can help strengthen your CMS. For instance, circumstances may arise requiring the forced placement of hazard insurance. While community banks may not frequently face the need to force place hazard insurance, having policies and procedures in place can help make these situations easier should they arise. Procedures may be designed to identify force place insurance issues in a timely manner, maintain templates for use in communications with borrowers, accurately code transactions, and properly assess, and if applicable, refund insurance premiums. Another non-routine issue you may want to consider in advance is how to identify and handle accommodation loans, because they could trigger additional servicing requirements. For example, assume an established customer requests an adjustable rate mortgage, or ARM, when you currently do not offer ARM loans. Given your business relationship with the customer, you may decide to accommodate the request. In addition to adhering to regulatory requirements in originating the accommodation loan, if you are going to service the loan, it is important to ensure that you comply with applicable servicing regulations. Involving compliance staff can help ensure that you are able to identify and fulfill all applicable requirements when servicing any type of loan. It may also be beneficial for management and loan officers who may make such infrequent accommodations to periodically review the mortgage loan servicing requirements. Identifying covered transactions can also be more complicated when a home-secured loan is originated through departments other than home mortgage lending units, such as the commercial or agricultural lending units. In such cases, proper system coding is critical to ensuring that covered loans are identified and the servicing requirements are satisfied. It is important for bank staff to understand system parameters and coding to ensure that you are in compliance with the rules. This brings us to the end of our video on the compliance management system and the mortgage servicing rules. In this video, we discuss designing an appropriate CMS and anticipating potentially non-routine events. This slide lists the mortgage servicing rules in Regulation X and Regulation Z. The main servicing provisions in Regulation X include escrow accounts, 12 CFR 1024.17, and provisions in subpart C, mortgage servicing, 12 CFR 1024.30 through 12 CFR 1024.41, which include mortgage servicing transactions, error resolution procedures and requests for information, force placed insurance, 
general servicing policies, procedures, and requirements, early intervention requirements for certain borrowers, continuity of contact, and loss mitigation procedures. The main servicing provisions in Regulation Z include ARM interest rate adjustment disclosures, 12 CFR 1026.20, payment processing and payoff statements, 12 CFR 1026.36C, mortgage transfer disclosures, 12 CFR 1026.39, and periodic statements, including the small servicer exemption and definition, 12 CFR 1026.41. You can sign up for CFPB email updates about compliance resources and submit regulation inquiries on the CFPB website at https colon slash slash www.consumerfinance.gov. If you are an FDIC supervised institution, you can also reach out to your FDIC consumer compliance examiners with questions. Additionally, you can ask a question via the email address supervision at fdic.gov. Thank you for watching this video on the mortgage servicing rules. We hope you found it both useful and informative.